for those of you that don't know me, my name is Britt. I am the Director of Education here at Blushington. Uh, for this masterclass, I'll be teaching a hello. For this masterclass, I'll be teaching a Simply Glowing look, which is one of our signature looks here at Blushington. Um, I am mainly the, hi Kabita, I am mainly the academy instructor. So this is a real privilege to be able to be here during this masterclass with you all. So what to expect from this class? Well, it's going to be about 60 minutes and I am going to go through each step that I would take to achieve a Simply Glowing look. Hi, Nikki. And you're more than welcome to follow along. Some of you may have all of the products you need. Some of you, hello, Julia. Some of you may have a few products, but don't ever hesitate to follow along. Um, and if you have any questions, please pop them in the chat. I'm excited to be able to answer the questions that you may have and make makeup just a little bit easier for you because it shouldn't be difficult. It's fun. It's makeup. So let's get started. Don't forget to ask any questions in the chat. And as I talk, I'm going to be sure to show the products that I'm using, talk about what I love about them and best uses for some of these products. Um, even though it may say that it's only for cheeks, it's really possible to make the products diverse. So feel free to use them at your leisure. You guys ready for this? It's going to be fun. So let's get started. So as always, we want to start makeup with skin. So skin is the most important. So I'm going to start with my little skin prep. I have my eye cream right here. So I'm going to be using my gentle exfoliating eye cream. Now, hi, hi, Wanda. Now, everything that I'm going to use, I am going to put it on the back of my hand. So I do this because my brain thinks that it works better when it warms up on my hand. So I do it always for everything. So I'm going to take this little bit. I'm going to use my ring finger and I'm just going to press it gently under my eye. You want to always make sure that you're using an eye cream so that the skin is hydrated when you're applying products. The skin under the eye and around the eye is so thin and so delicate that it's easy for it to start looking real dry. And we don't want that, especially as we get older. So if you are over the age of 30 and you have not started using an eye cream, I highly encourage that you begin today. It's very, very important. So now that I have my eye cream on, I'm gonna go in with my moisturizer. So this is my Souffle moisturizer from Angela Coglia. I like this one because my skin is kind of normal to dry. And because of that, it dries out very quickly under my foundation. So I want to make sure that it's hydrated. So I'm going to go in and I'm just going to kind of press this into my skin. I don't want to really disrupt my skin by rubbing it. So I'm just going to press it in to really get the moisturizer to penetrate. And now that I am all nice and hydrated, it's time to begin. So. Step one, I always like to start with skin in totality. So I am going to go in with my foundation. So I have here my Becca foundation in dark gold, and this is the Aqua Luminous foundation. So I'm going to go in with that. I'm going to use just a little bit. I'm going to put it on the back of my hand right now so you can see. I like to just start with a little bit. I don't need a lot of foundation because you don't want to overdo it. You want it to be light. So I'm going to apply that with my Beauty Blender, which I have sitting right here in front of me. And my Beauty Blender is wet. So it's very important to wet the Beauty Blender so that it expands, so that it, one, doesn't soak up all of your foundation, then you lose more product. And two, a little bit of moisture in here is gonna help introduce moisture back into the skin so that your skin does not dry out. So taking my Beauty Blender into my foundation, I'm just gonna tap it in like that. And then I'm just going to begin Pressing this in on my face, just like this. And since we're doing something glowy, I'm gonna make sure that I don't use too much setting powder as I put on my makeup today. And for the eyes, we're gonna have a little bit of fun doing something a little different than you're probably accustomed to doing. So now that I'm just pressing this in and you never want to wipe when you're using a beauty blender. You always want to make sure that you're just pressing the product into your skin because you want them to become one. You want it to marry. The, the goal when applying foundation is for it to just look like your skin is amazing. It's not for it to look like, oh, she has on some foundation today or he has on foundation today. No, it's supposed to look like your skin has been perfected. So I just got a little bit more and I'm just going to finish pressing this in, working it up to the forehead close to my hairline. 
You always want to get as close to the hairline as possible. Oh, yes, of course you can use foundation with the beauty blender. That's what I'm doing right now. I like to put it on my hand so I can just get what I need and apply it to my face. Again, I don't want to do too much. This is our summertime glow. And oftentimes in summer, we don't want to have a lot of makeup on because it's hot. We want it to be a light touch, a light application of product. So I'm going in lightly to get my good base started. Now, I like to go in with just a light little bit of foundation and then put on my color corrector. So for some people, they might call that backwards. But I like to do that so that I don't put on too much makeup. So I'm going to use a little bit of my Stila color, uh, color correcting palette. And that's this one here. And I'm gonna go in with a little bit of this orange. And so what that's gonna do, it's going to correct the deeper areas on my face that are unwanted in terms of pigment. Hi. So I'm getting a little bit, I'm actually just gonna use my finger. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press it right here on that little area that's a little bit darker. And I'm just going to work it in. Look at that, almost disappears. And that's what we want. So that's why I like to use my color corrector after my foundation. So as you can see, there's no necessarily right or wrong way to apply the makeup. As long as everything is beautifully blended and seamless, that is what we want. So as I'm applying this, you can see that I'm over blending. That is what I like to call overlapping the product. So even though I wanted them, the product right here in this area, as I pressed it in with my finger, again, very gently, I'm working it around with my fingers so that I can ensure there's no hard start or stop with my makeup. That is never what you want. I'm gonna add just a little bit more right there. I don't know what that little spot is, but I just wanna perfect my skin. So I'm really just focusing here around my mouth where I have the most discoloration. So now that I've done that, I'm gonna take my beauty blender. I really have nothing left on my hand, but I'm just gonna pick up whatever happens to be sitting there and I'm just going to press this back into my skin. Just like that. So now I have this beautiful blend. And I can add just a little more coverage if I feel like I need it. I'm going to add a smidge more, just a smidge. So I want to make sure that my color corrector doesn't pop through. So when I say a smidge, that is just a little bit. So I'm going to pick that up right there. And again, I'm just going to focus where I need it and begin pressing this in. Again, working it and over blending to make sure there is no hard start or stop in my product. Always making sure to get around the crevices of the nose. You don't ever wanna forget that. I see sometimes people miss these little areas on the side. So don't let that be you. Make sure you get everything. Thank you, yes. Sometimes we forget them. Noses just take over. So I'm gonna place my blender there. And now that my skin is kind of set, kind of started, I have a base, I have a starting point, I'm gonna move on to my eyes. So I'm gonna do something very different today with my eyes. I'm gonna start off using this Girlactic Lip Paint. So summertime, again, it's a little hot, you're a little sweaty, it's a little humid, and we want our makeup to last. So what better than going in with a matte lip paint? So that is how I'm gonna start. I'm actually gonna use it as not just my base, but as my eyeshadow primer as well. So I'm gonna take a little bit and I'm just, again, putting some on the back of my hand because this is my palette. And that's where I like to put all my products. So I'm going to grab my Delium brush in 777 here. And I'm gonna go in with my lip paint. So I'm picking it up on my brush here like this. And I like to kind of hold my, my eye a little taut as I apply. And I'm tilting my head up because I'm using the zoom as my mirror. So I'm gonna tilt my head up because I want my eyelid to be stretched. If I'm applying it when there's lines and creases in my lid, there'll be lines and creases when I finish. And that is never what I want in a makeup application. So I'm gonna tilt my chin up as I apply to keep my eyelid stretched. I have my mirror out now. So I'll be able to see really well. And I'm just gonna start applying and I'm staying very close to my lash line as I apply this. Very pretty color. It's one of my favorites. And today I'm gonna to use it for more than just on my eye. I'm gonna use it on my cheeks as well. Again, for that waterproof like hold. So you don't have to worry about touching up your makeup. If you're out all day and you just happen to get a little sweaty, this is going to ensure 
that your product is going to stay on all day. So I'm blending it. And as I'm blending, if you're watching, I'm blending up towards my eyebrow. So this is going to get rid of, again, any of those lines of demarcation, as we like to call them, or any hard start or stop. We want it to be seamless and blended. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, I love this color. It's such a great color. It's like a mauve color. It's a great nude for deeper people. It's a great nude on myself, so it works on my complexion. And a little bit deeper and a little bit lighter if you're looking for a good nude. So I'm going to do the other eye. And when you're doing your makeup, you want to make sure that you pick up the same amount of product on your brush for both sides. Yes, mauve is such a good color. So what I find a lot of people do is what they do on one side, they might go, oh my goodness, that was too much, that was too intense. I'm gonna pick up a little less product on the other side. But when you do that, you're actually shortchanging yourself because now you're putting less product on the other side of your face. And then when you blend it down, it's not going to blend the same. Even though to the naked eye, it may look like you have the same amount of product from one side to the other, you don't. And what that's going to do is going to make your face look like it's unbalanced. So one side, you're going to have a little more product than the other. It is a lip product. Yes, I'll hold it up again for you in just a second. So again, I'm blending all the way up to my eyebrow so that there's a seamless blend from lash line all the way to eyebrow. Yes. Let me hold it up for you again. So this is the color that I'm using. It is a lip color. It's Girlactic, Girlactic Lip Paint in the shade Allure. It's a matte lip. So I'm using it right now, Sophia, as my, as my primer and as my base. And because it has a waterproof-like setting to it, it's going to ensure that it stays on my face a lot longer than a normal eyeshadow or a normal primer normally does. So now that I have this on, as you can tell, I'm going for a pinky type of a look today. I'm just feeling very, very pinky. I like the way pink looks on me. So I'm going to be using my Jouer Rose Gold Matte and Shimmer Eyeshadow Palette. So this is what it looks like. Colors are gorgeous. So I'm going to play in this deeper color here, this one here as well. And then I think I'm gonna even use some of this pink and maybe some shimmer. You've got to go for some shimmer when making a glowing look. So I'm going to stick with my 777 brush that I started using. And I like to use the same brush over and over again. Yes, you do, Yvonne. Then you need this palette. Uh, using the same brush over and over again for me makes my blending easier because the product is already on my brush. I don't need to clean it off. I need, don't need to wipe it off. What this is going to do is make everything else that I blend easier to blend because I already have the product on my brush. So. I'm gonna go in to this palette here and I'm gonna grab this deeper color and I'm gonna start building my eye. So grabbing this deeper color, does it have a name? Yes, it's called Mahogany. It looks like a very deep purpley plum type of a color. So picking some up on my brush, this is about how much I picked up here. I'm gonna start on the outer corner and what I'm gonna do is I'm right-handed. So my right side is usually my better eye. So I'm gonna start on my left side. It's best to always start on the eye that gives you a little more trouble so that you're able to work better on this eye and then it's easier for you to duplicate to the eye that you um, is your stronger side. So starting on this outer corner again, I'm holding my mirror below me so that my eyelid can be stretched. I'm going to begin pressing this product on. So I don't really wipe as I apply products. I like to press them in. Pressing in a product is going to help ensure that you're gonna get that pigment payoff. It's gonna keep the product from falling. That's what we like to call fallout. And it's gonna give it a better blend. Sometimes when we brush or blend back and forth vigorously, we can disrupt the skin underneath. So if you have drier skin, you can start flaking the skin again. So pressing products helps to us to ensure that we don't mess up what's happening underneath the skin. So all of my prep will stay. I'm just gonna continue pressing this and I'm going all the way up to my natural crease. So even though you can't see my natural crease, it's right where my eyeball sinks into the eye socket. So it's the natural depression of the bone structure. So as I continue to press and blend this product, I'm just gonna work it 
towards the center of my eye as I press. And this is going to give me that over blend, which is going to make every other product I lay blend seamlessly into each other. And that's the name of the game, seamless blending. So now that I've done this one side, I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side, picking up some mahogany. I'm gonna go in and I'm going to begin pressing on this eye. So again, just pressing, not wiping, working up to the crease and then beginning to blend towards the center of my eye. Just like this. And pressing is a different type of motion to get adjusted to. So it may take a little bit, maybe a little awkward for a while, but don't worry. It gets easier as some of our graduates who are here today can attest to. So I'm gonna continue pressing so that I have the same amount of product on, from one side to the other, making sure to get close to my lash line. Yes, it's such a great palette. So I'm going to now, I wanna soften any lines that I may have made when applying this product. So I'm gonna grab my fluffy brush, this is 785, and using the same palette, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of this mahogany and a little bit of this color. Because I want to soften that line, but I don't want to tone down the product. I don't want to make my product transparent. I still want that pigment. I still want the color payoff. So I want to make sure that I'm using a color that it can blend into easily. So picking up a little bit of this with my brush and then a little bit of this, I'm going to begin pressing it right above where that product ended and moving it by pressing inside towards the inner half of my eye so that I can soften that line that the mahogany created when I applied it. So you always have to have a color to blend into. It's very important. It makes blending so much easier. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, picking up some mahogany, then picking up that more burgundy color called rosewood. I'm going to press to soften that line. And I'm going to just blend very gently back and forth to really ensure that my product is blended. You don't want to apply all of your products without blending because then you're going to have a lot of work to do at the end when you're trying to figure out how do I get all this to blend together. So it's really important to make sure that you don't deal with that. So now that I have that deeper color on the outer corner, we've got a little bit of depth, a little dimension in the eyes. So I'm going to go in and I'm just going to add a lid color because the base that I've provided or created with the lip paint is doing everything for me. It's giving me that pink. It's giving me that gradual change from lighter to deeper. So I'm just going to top it off with a little bit of shimmer. And I am going to go in with a little bit of this shimmer here. This one is rose gold. And I think I'm also going to use a little bit of this rose quartz to really seal the deal on this shimmery look. So I'm going to be using my concealer brush in 936. I'm not gonna wet the brush. I don't like to wet my brush when I do shimmer because it can make the rest of the eye look a little muddy. I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna again press and wipe very gently as I apply. So it's gonna give the same payoff as using my finger without actually having to use my finger or a wet brush. So going in, I'm picking up and I'm gonna go back and forth to really get a lot of that rose gold color. And I'm just gonna very gently tap it with my finger now. Again, looking down, I'm gonna start on the inner corner and work my way out. I'm going to press and kind of wipe as I apply this color because I want the color payoff. Ooh, look at that. There's nothing better than a little bit of shimmer to set off the look. Ooh, yes, that's so pretty. So I got it just where I want it placement wise and I don't think I wanna take it over a little bit further than that. So I'm just going to, I'm turning my brush to the side now with the product side up. So I'm just going to pull it over to begin blending this into the lip paint. I don't want a lot. I don't want the shimmer to cover the whole lid. I just want it to be my accent. So kind of pulling as I go. Changing the brush around really helps to change the blend that you receive from that. And I'm going to go back in with my fluffy brush that I used to soften my colors up here. I'm gonna take that fluffy brush, 
and I'm going to blend this shimmer over so that again, everything is seamless and there are no lines. So this is what I'm going to use. Whatever's left on this is gonna help me blend out and soften the borders of my final color. So I'll just have a beautiful gradient of shimmer from the inner corner to the deeper color on the outer corner. And I love it. I hope you guys can see that well. I'm in love with what I can see. So I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. Thank you, Kiera. So I'm gonna use the same brush. I'm gonna pick up some of that product, wiggling back and forth because I want a lot, tapping it very lightly just in case there's excess. Helps with fallout. You have to make your arms kind of weird when you're doing the other side. And they're kind of crossed over in front of me so I can get the angle that I want. So going again into this inner corner, and I'm gonna press in white to really get that color payoff that I'm looking for. I hope I'm not missing any of your questions in the chat while I'm applying. I'm really trying to look. So if I did, I will get to that in just a moment. So again, I'm turning my brush to the side to just blend that product over. Then grabbing my fluffy brush, and I'm going to just soften it out, blend it out, get rid of any of the border that I created. And as I always like to say, if your mouth isn't open, are you really blending? Because <laughs> your mouth should be open when you're blending so you can breathe better. Yes, these are amazing brushes. You definitely need them. They're very soft, so I'm adding a little bit more to this inner corner. Um, I saw that I had a little bit more on my left side and I kind of liked that. So I'm going to add a little bit more here. These brushes are vegan and if you take really good care of them, they will last you a long time. Um, about half of them I've had for ooh, like three years now. I've had them for a while. So I'm going to blend this back out because I added a little more product. So I still want to make sure it's softened. So what am I looking for right now? Well, I'm looking for, of course, perfection. But we know that as humans, we cannot achieve perfection. So I'm looking to make sure everything is balanced. I wanna make sure everything looks the same from one side to the other. I don't want anything to be heavier on one side. I don't wanna have one, more product on one side than the other. If so, there's some adjustments that I need to take. So now that I finished, I'm gonna do a pop of color with that lighter color, what is that called? The rose quartz, this one here, I am, but I'm gonna save that until I get some more of my makeup done. So putting that to the side for now, I'm going to grab my eyebrow pencil. So this, if you know anything about me, is my favorite part of makeup, putting on eyebrows. I love eyebrows. I think they really help to define the face. They make you look um, put together. I like to say they make you look loved. So good eyebrows can do a lot for the face. So going in with my brow pencil, I have, what is this that I'm using? My Kevin Aquan in Dark Brunette. Have so many pencils laying around. Just want to make sure I'm grabbing the right one. So I'm using my Kevin Aquan in Dark Brunette. And I just want to give my eyebrows a little love. I don't want them to be too defined. I kind of want them to still look like they belong to me, like I may have grown them. So I'm going to start on this eyebrow because as we know, starting on the side where you're not as strong is a lot easier than trying to do your good side and then the side that you're not as strong. So starting on my left brow, I'm going to just begin adding a little bit of fullness into my brow. So I'm just flicking up from the lowest point of my brow to add some fullness. Brows are tricky, guys. So don't ever feel bad if they're just not cooperating or going the way you want them to go. They require more structure than any other part of the makeup. So I am creating a brow and giving myself an arch. I don't really have an arch. This is where it should be. As we can see, it kind of dips a little bit. That's natural, unfortunately. So I'm going to add product onto the skin to give the illusion of a lift to the brow. So it's gonna make my brows look 
a little more loved than they are naturally. So as I'm taking my brow and creating my tail, notice that I'm pulling my tail this way and I'm not looping my tail down towards my cheekbone. That's very important. You don't ever wanna take the tail and bring it down towards the cheek because that's going to give the illusion that your brow or your face is kind of melting or drooping as I call it. And we never wanna give the illusion that faces are doing that. Oh, thank you so much. Hi, Jess. So finishing off this brow, really defining this shape a little. So I'm gonna do, as you can see, it just has a little more lift on this side than this side. So I'm gonna mirror that, adding just a little more life to this right eyebrow. So I'm going to start again right here at the bottom. A little bit of hair. Starting at the bottom, I'm gonna kind of flick it upwards to first build fullness in the brow. I always like to build the fullness and then the structure. But sometimes adding fullness means that you don't have to go in and add so much structure or so much definition. Yes, that Kevin is amazing. I am so glad. Eyebrows are your favorite too. Yes, team brows. Yes, I love all that. I'm so glad you guys like eyebrows as much as I do. I could talk about them all day. It's really, I mean, it's wonderful for me, but I sometimes feel bad for my family. So as I am adding my arch to this brow to get them to match, you can see that I'm blending from the hair that I have onto my skin. I don't want to just draw straight onto my skin because that can create a gap between the product that I'm adding and the hair that I naturally have, which is going to make a hole, which is going to really make it obvious that I filled in my brows. And it's all about making it look like these are my natural brows and they're just kind of perfect in their own right. So finishing this fullness, making sure that as I'm taking it down to my tail, Again, I'm pulling it backwards towards my ear or towards my hairline, but not down towards my cheekbone so that I keep my face looking snatched and lifted and not droopy. Nobody wants that. We all want to add a little bit of youth to our faces. And eyebrows is a great way to do that. So now that I have my eyebrows on, they look pretty similar, much like sisters. I am going to add a little bit of my brow gel. So I have here the Anastasia brow gel. And I think brow gel is important when you are finalizing the brow because it's going to put all the hairs where they're supposed to be and hold them in place. So I'm going to brush through my brow. And I always like to do the gel after I finish. It's a lot more difficult to fill in if you've already added the gel. Not impossible, just a little more difficult. And I'm usually looking for ways to make my job easier. So adding brow gel last. Makes my job a lot easier. So it just adds more fullness. It holds everything in place. They look loved. They look cared for. And that's what we want in brows. So now I'm going to go on to my eyeliner. So I am in love with my Stila Smudge Pot. I also have my Intense Black Liner, which I do like a lot. It's a liquid. I prefer liquids or creams over the pencil. That's just preference. So I'm gonna go in and I like to use my pot when I'm creating a wing and I am kind of addicted to wings right now. So that's what I'm gonna be making for myself. I'm gonna make a wing liner. Um, wings and I, I like to call us frenemies. We have not always gotten along, but when I started working at Blushington, um, one of our wonderful co-founders found out that Wings and I did not get along the way I'd like them to. And she gave me clients so that I could practice wings. And that made me so much better. And I encourage everyone to always practice the things that give you the most trouble. That's where you should be putting most of your attention. If brows give you the most trouble, you should be doing brows on yourself every day. You should be working on your sister, your best friend, your mom, the girl up the street, your neighbor, whomever it is that you can get better. Because practice makes perfect. I wish there was a better way, but you gotta just do it over and over. It's that repetition. So because my eyes are a little hooded, Doing a wing liner, I have to be careful not to go over that little fold. I like to call it my little pocket of fat 
because that can make my eyeliner look distorted and I don't want that. So I'm going to keep it kind of low right under that to give the illusion that I'm just kind of pulling out and extending my line. So I am going to start on my left side, which for some strange reason, when I do liner, this left side is my better side. So I should probably start on the right, but I'm not. I am going to start right here on this outer corner, right where my lashes end. I'm just going to kind of pull it out. And I'm going to keep it kind of straight. Very little elevation for the wing. And I'm going to use my finger now to help me clean that up. Look at that. It's nice and sharp. Yes. If a wing isn't sharp, is it a wing? I always say I want it to be sharp enough where I can take it off of you and stab you in the heart and then put it back on. That's how sharp it should be. All right, so I'm putting the top on it. You have to keep the top on it when you're using this product because it can dry out quickly and you don't want it to dry out. So doing the other side, I'm mimicking the level. So I'm looking straight into my mirror to make sure I get my angle right. That's why I like to start with just the wing so that I can make sure I'm getting it just right. Wings aren't always easy. I uh, used to come home from work when we were in store at Blushington because we used to have our brick and mortars. We did pivot because of COVID and now we are digital. But before that, I would come home from a long day of work and I'd put on wing liner because I needed to practice. So I practiced on myself regularly. And one day I just slapped it on without even having to think about it and shocked myself. So now that I have begun creating my wing, I'm gonna get more product because it's time to finish that wing. It's all about finding that perfect base. So I pulled out a lot of product now again to put on the back of my hand because I wanna keep my liner brush as taut as possible. The more taut it is, the tighter of a line, the thinner of a line I can get. And I am using, I believe this is the 710 eyeliner brush from Delium. It does come in the brush set, but all my numbers are ripped off on this one, so I'm really not sure. So I'm going to deepen this in color. Make sure they look the same. What do you guys think? About the same angle? I feel like this one's just a smidge higher. I'm going to fix that. And now I'm going to connect. So my wing is extra long. Um, sometimes I'm in an extra long mode for wings. I'm going to shorten it today, though. I want to go for something a little more natural. So before I continue, I want to shorten that just a smidge. So I'm just going to take my finger and pull at it. And it's going to remove some of the product without ruining what I've already created. So taking my brush, I'm going to connect from about right here and i'm going to bring it in to connect with my lower lash line it's going to create like a triangle and then i'm going to fill it in so i'm going to take this and drag it from here over it's so creamy and smooth makes my job so much easier Boom, wing. I saw there was someone in the chat. Let me pull that up. Mag trainer years ago. Oh, okay, nice. Yeah, wing liner, you have to know tricks. It is a trickier technique. I'm so glad you were able to grasp that and master that. I hope you practice regularly so that you stay on top of it. So I'm gonna do the other side now. Still starting from about the same spot. And I'm going to drag it in. You have to change up your wing liner game. Hi, Sloan, every, every now and then. So I put on my wing, and guess what? This side came out thicker. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make this side a little thicker. That is the thing about wings. Sometimes they tell you what they're going to do. 
So it's thicker right about here. So I'm going to fix that. And then once I fix it, I'm going to clean it up. There we go, that's better. So now I'm going to clean it up. And so by cleaning it up, I'm going to use a small brush. I'm going to use this little angle brush in 762. And I'm going to use my concealer from Jouet. So never be above cleaning up your wing. It happens. So I'm putting a little bit of that concealer on the back of my hand, like all of my products. I'll hold it up right now so you can see. And I'm using the shade Amber in the concealer. So this is it here. So Amber is such a beautiful shade, um, which is gonna give me the perfect amount of highlight. It's the same color I'm gonna use under my eye. So this is going to work really well to help perfect these wings that I just created. So I'm gonna start with this side. And I'm just kind of perfecting this. Just double checking my work to see what needs to be adjusted. I see that this one's also a little bit longer, so I'm going to also cut some of that off. So now that I've done that, I'm gonna blend it out using my 775 brush. It has white tips on it. So it works really great for liquids, creams, and powders. It's a versatile brush and I love versatility in my makeup products. So Jouer is very similar to that um, concealer that you mentioned. Let me make sure I get your name right. Chantiel. I'm hoping I say that correctly. Um, the Jouer concealer is very similar to that. It's just creamier than the Too Faced that you mentioned. So it's going to be a little more hydrating, a little more moisturizing, which means that it works on a wider range of skin types. So you don't have to just use it on your dry clients or just your oily clients. You can use it on everyone. Yay, I said it right. Awesome, I'm so glad. I'm an advocate on pronouncing people's names correctly. I like mine pronounced correctly. So I work hard to make sure everyone else gets that same. So now that I have my wings done, I'm going to go in with my Stila Intense Liner just to take it all the way across. So I'm going to start here on this inner corner. And I'm going to just pull across. I'm kind of stamping as I go across. to connect with my wings. And I have lash extensions, so I have to pull them out of the way. So I'm like pushing them down to make sure that my line is straight. So when working on clients or on yourself, you wanna make sure to move them out of the way. You don't want them to mess up what you got going on. So just dragging this across. And then I'm going to connect it here. Just like that. So now let me make sure they're the same thickness. This one's a little bit thicker right in here than this one. So I'm just going to adjust that. I think I did it, folks. <laughs> I don't breathe normally when I do my own liner. That's so funny. But I was trying to talk while I worked. So, so glad I was able to get that done. Maybe you holding your breath helped me out, Britt. So I appreciate that. So now that my eyes are done, I've got my brows on. I can finish my lower lash line. Um, Angela, I do sometimes complete the wing with the Stila pen. The only reason I didn't today is because on my type of skin, sometimes the pen skips when I'm trying to create that wing perfectly. If I have to go in and start adjusting or add more product, it'll start skipping and kind of taking some of my product off. 
So when I go in and create the wing with my Stila smudge pot, it makes it easier because it's so creamy in the event that I make an, if I have to make an adjustment or if I have to correct anything like I did. But you can use the pen. Like lots of artists use the pen. So what I like to say about makeup artistry, hi Jess. What I like to say about makeup artistry is it's an art form and everyone's going to have their own favorite medium, their own favorite brush, their own favorite foundation, favorite concealer that you'll be able to work that I can't work as well. So everyone's going to have their own. For me, it's the smudge pot. For you, it could be the pen. I believe one of our instructors here at Blushington Academy, Sloan, I think she prefers the pen than the smudge pot as well. So you're not alone in that. So I'm going to do my lower lash line now. So I'm going to take my lip brush. This is number 542. And I'm going to go, oh, Sloan likes the smudge pot. My apologies. It's just a wonderful product. It's super creamy and you can do so many things with it. Um, you can make a smoky eye with it, which is my favorite way to use it. So I'm gonna go back in with my palette here and I'm gonna pick up this deeper color and I'm gonna start building my lower lash line. So I always say that whatever you do to the top, you have to do to the bottom, balance like math. So looking up, I'm actually gonna hold my mirror up here because I wanna really be able to see what I'm doing under here. And then after I do my under part, I can now do my concealer to really clean and finish and perfect this look. So coming underneath, I'm going to take this through my lash line, blending it over towards the inner corner as I go, so that most of my product is deposited on this outer corner. I'm gonna add a little bit more for depth and do the same thing on the other side. Taking it through the lashes, making sure it connects with what I already did at the top, and blending it all the way to the inner corner. But I saturated the outer corners. <laughs> So I'm also going to add a little bit of that deeper color, this licorice looking color. I'm gonna place a little bit of that here too for that depth that I'm creating. Keeping it just on the outer corner. Blending it into the wings. I like a seamless transition. So now that I have that on, before I add a little bit of shimmer, I'm going to kind of clean up under here where I just brought it down just a little too low. And just kind of soften this and blend everything together. Now I'm gonna go in with my shimmer. Oh no, I lost my brush. Oh, here it is. So funny, you put a brush down, you just use and immediately just runs away. So I'm gonna do the inner corner highlight now. So I'm gonna take this angle brush, 762, and I'm finally gonna use this rose quartz shade. So picking that up with my brush, and this is the brush I use with concealer. So it's gonna have a kind of a tackiness to it. So it's gonna really hold the product well. I'm going to place this on the inner corner here for that added pop. And what I like to also do is take it right here on the lower, inner corner as well. So I'm gonna do that to both sides. So I'm just kind of going in circular motions with my little angle brush, just to blend this all together. If you're following along at home, I would love to see your final looks. So if you would decide to post them, oh, thank you so much. If you decide to post them, please tag us, Blushington, Blushington Academy, and myself, I'm Britt Brow. And I would love to see your recreation of this look. So that little pop is gonna really just seal the deal, but you wanna make sure that pop blends in with everything else that you just applied. So just to ensure I have a beautiful blend, I'm just gonna go in a little bit with my pencil brush and just soften everything out. And I like to do my concealer after. So in case I do bring things too low or I'm a little messy, I don't have to worry about it because I'm gonna clean all of that up right now with my Jouer concealer. Bling Game Strong, thanks so much. Love that. Bling Game has to be strong. So going in with my concealer, which of course I'm putting on the back of my hand, like all of my products. 
I'm going to blend that out with my Beauty Blender. So Beauty Blender is back on deck. Taking this product and I'm going to start pressing this under my eye. This is gonna add brightness and I'm holding my chin down so that my under eye area is stretched. I have the fan on, so I'm trying not to have the fan blow in my eyes so I don't cry off my makeup. So blending, and I'm slightly blending it up the side of my nose because I wanna make sure that I have everything blended out. I don't want concealer just sitting under my eye. What that's going to do, just sitting under your eye is gonna make you look even more tired. And we're trying to erase the illusion of exhaustion from the face. So let me get a little more. I like to get just a little bit. I don't want to use a lot of product. Little is best. So I'm going to go back in on the other side and place some product there. And I'm taking it again up the side of my nose. This is the Jouet. Yes. Doesn't it blend like a dream? I don't know if you can tell by watching me blend it, but it blends like a dream. If I could describe it, I would call it like cushion, it's like a cushion concealer. It's very bouncy. It's very creamy. It's very blendable. It's got hydration in it. So you don't have to worry about you getting the clients dried out or drying yourself out. Yes, their products are so amazing. They're very silky feeling. So I'm also going to add just a little bit of concealer right here because it's a little bit lighter than everything else I've used. It's going to add lightness to my face. And we always like to have a little bit of light in the face because face has dimension. So we need that light so that we look real and we look alive. Anything else is going to make you look 2D, which is going to make you look flat. And nobody looks cute and flat. So now I've got dimension to my face. And I've cleaned under my eye any product that may have fallen. So look at that, very nice. So now to finish us off, I'm going to go in with bronzer. And speaking of bronzer, I of course have my Jouer bronzer right here that I'm going to use. But I also like to use their Soft Focus Powder in the shade Deep. I really like this color. It looks so rich. It makes me, I like to say, it makes me look and feel expensive. Adding bronzer to the face is just mimicking the sun's behavior. And people that always have a perfect tan usually are always on vacation. And people always on vacation, you know, they look a little expensive. So this also helps me to look a little expensive. So I'm going to use my angled brush in 942. This is my favorite cheek brush. And I'm going to start with this product and I'm going to come in and I'm going to pick up the product on my brush. And I'm actually going to tap my brush just for this. I don't tap my brush when I do eyeshadow, but I do for bronzer because I don't want too much. So I'm starting at my hairline and I'm pulling away from my hairline. I'm making kind of circular motions, but I'm pulling away from my hairline. Pulling away from the hairline is going to help me really mimic the sun's behavior because I'm flicking it across my forehead just where my forehead protrudes the most. So I'm not going to over bronze myself. So my forehead would only get the sun about to here. So why would I bring bronzer down further? There's no need. So flicking it is gonna help it just settle and set where it's supposed to. So now I have this beautiful bronzed forehead, which I love a good bronze forehead. And I like to use a deeper shade for that. So I'm gonna set that to the side and I'm gonna pick up my Jouer Duo Bronzer. And I'm gonna go in with the deeper color, this one here. This one is Sun Gaze. So picking up some sun gaze with my angled brush. What I want to make sure is that I don't put this in the wrong spot. This is very important. So I'm going to use this brush as my line. So I'm going to suck in my cheeks. I'm going to find where my cheek has a depression naturally, and that's where I'm going to place this. So if I were to push up, right above that is my cheekbone. So that lets me know that nothing that I do should fall beneath this line. Everything should stop above this line because that's where my cheekbone is. Keeping everything up is going to give lift to my face. So starting near my hairline, I'm going to press and I'm just going to follow my brush handle. And I'm stopping about here because that's where the bone stops. This is just the happy part of my cheek, the apple. But I just want to place bronzer on top of the bone, not in the hollow, just on top of the bone here. So now I was 
able to make sure that I didn't go too low. And that's really important with your cheek products. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side with the same product. Hold in my cheeks, place it in here, right where that bone is, and start pressing. Stopping right as though it's the outer corner of my eye and there was a line drawn down is where I'm stopping. And it's gonna give me a beautiful cheek line, which is what I wanted. So using the same brush, I'm just gonna press to get rid of the obvious line of demarcation. We don't want it to be too strong. So now I just have this nice glow on my face. I love the way bronzer gives a beautiful glow. And to finish us off, I'm going to add a little bit of my girl lactic from my cheeks. I hope you didn't think I forgot. This is the part that I was looking forward to. And because I don't want a lot of this, because this is a very pigmented product, I'm actually going to apply it with an eyeshadow brush. 785 is what's on this one. So I'm going to pick up a little bit from my girl lactic, very little bit. I'm going to smile and I'm going to place this about right here on both sides of my cheek. And I'm just going to start blending this in. So I'm going to create this beautiful pinky monochromatic look on my face and then top it off with a little bit of shimmer to finish off my perfect summer glow. So along with the glow, I'm also getting longevity with all of the products I'm using. Blending this with my eyeshadow brush because I don't need a lot and I want it to be light in tone and shade. Now, if you have applied your blush, whether it's a powder or cream or a lip like I'm using and you feel like, oh, it's just too much, I wanna tone it down, you can always take your beauty blender and just very gently press over it and it's going to soften your blush. Perfect. So now that I've used that, I'm gonna put that away. And I have my Jouer, my, my bronzer and blush duo. This is just a blush duo, my blush duo. And I can't show it to you because unfortunately I broke one side of it. So I'm gonna do my best. Um, as you can see, this side is all cracked up, which is the side I'm gonna use. So that's real sad. And I'm gonna use the same brush that I just finished applying the blush with to pick up some of this shimmer to apply to my cheek. So I'm gonna apply it to the cheek and to the top of the cheekbone. So when I smile, I'm gonna apply it here and I'm just gonna take it upward, focusing on the top most part of my cheek but I really want the apple to get some of that light. Same thing on the other side, let's smile a little and then let's take it up. And I always use a small fluffy brush when I apply highlighter because it's gonna give me a perfect application. It's gonna just go where I want it to go. I don't have to worry about accidentally getting it somewhere else and then having to worry about how do I clean that up or how do I fix that. And notice, as I was doing my makeup, even though I said, whoops, that's not what I wanted, or oh, that went somewhere I didn't want it to go, I never once wiped anything off. I cleaned it up, but I would clean it up with makeup. So I encourage you, instead of wiping your makeup off when you make a mistake, see what you can do to fix it with makeup, using concealer, using your foundation, using your products to fix that. Thank you. Thanks, Kiera. So now I have out my Soft Glam palette ignore it it's fabric it gets dirty but I'm going to use an eyeshadow to really seal this glow that I'm creating so I'm going to use the shade glistening it's right here it's a gorgeous shade I'm gonna swatch it just for a sec so you can see it's a gorgeous gold shade it's such a warm gold shade it's so pretty so I'm going to use that and I'm just going to place that on the topmost part of the cheek so that is just going to help seal the deal on this glow look so applying it just right here to really make my cheekbones pop. And that's what I want in a look. I want my cheekbones to pop. So getting a little more for the other side, pressing it on, and then circular motions to help my cheekbones just really pop. And again, if you got too much highlighter and you need to tone it down, Always pick up whatever you applied your blush, excuse me, whatever you applied your foundation with, and you can tone it down. So I would pick up my beauty blender that ran away from me and use that to tone down my blush. Oh, here it is, my highlight right in here. 
So you see how that just became one? It's like I just pressed it into my skin. It's still there. I'm still glowing, but it's not going to be a harsh or chalky look of highlight. So lastly, to finish it off, same shade, same brush. I'm going to take it down the bridge of my nose, really focusing it right here in the center area. Again, I like to press it in, making sure that everything becomes one. There's not too much. Don't want to look chalky. And a little here on my cupid's bow. So again, taking my beauty blender and just pressing that highlight in and on the lip. To finish off, I'm gonna put on my lip finally. So I'm gonna grab my lip liner. I'm using a brown lip liner. And then I'm gonna go in with my Girlactic, my lip paint. So I'm gonna, basically I'm creating a monochromatic look all over. I'm gonna have my eyes, my cheeks, and my lips the same color. So going in, I'm just gonna create a little bit of definition in the lips. and shade it in just a little. Oops. Come in with my finger and just kind of press in the product. I don't want a harsh 90s lip line. I just want it soft. And then I'm gonna go in with my lip brush. So I'm gonna take a little place it right there. And I'm going to take my lip brush. I'm just wiping off the excess product. And I'm going to use it to blend it in. It's just going to create a soft nude stain. And I just like a soft stain for the lip. And I really like the way this look came out. I hope you guys enjoyed it. So now I just have a beautiful, soft mauve nude type of lip. Making sure I didn't get any <laughs> lipstick on my teeth. And that is my Simply Glowing face. Does anybody have any questions? I know we're almost at the end, we're almost at time, but I would love to hear questions or take questions. If you have any, Carlo, you look gorgeous. Did you follow along? Yes, snaps. For those of you that don't know, we always give snaps as appreciation. So if your camera is off, snaps are always welcome. Thank you so much. I appreciate everyone joining. So if you have any questions and you would like to say them out loud, feel free to now unmute yourselves and ask away. If not, if you feel more comfortable popping it in the chat, please go ahead and do that. Don't forget that all the products that I used here are available on blushington.com. And if you use the code BRIT20, I believe, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, yes, BRIT20, you will get 20% off of your purchases in the next 48 hours. You will also save 20% on Blushington Academy tuition. I am the director of education. I do teach a lot of the academy sessions and would love to have any and all of you to join the academy. Did anybody have any questions? Yes, we love a good weekend holiday. I'm so glad you enjoyed. Thank you, Wanda. Hi, Charles. <laughs> Thanks, Georgia, for joining. Always welcome. Love having people from all over the country. I know we have a birthday girl out there. Happy birthday, Vanessa. I know today is your birthday. Thanks so much for joining us on your birthday. Thank no, unfortunately. You. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, Mindy, unfortunately, all of our brick and mortar locations are closed. We do offer in-home services. So if you are looking to get 
makeup services, we can have someone come to you if you're interested. Um, you can send me a, a quick email or a private chat and we can get that set up for you. Did I miss anybody's? You're welcome. Definitely. You're welcome. I'm sorry, say that again. Okay, I guess I didn't miss anybody. Well, I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. I know it's a holiday weekend. I hope you have a wonderful holiday weekend. I hope you're able to purchase some of my favorites so that you can practice this easy, quick, monochromatic summer look, summer glow look. I had fun creating it with you guys. Brittany. Yes. Okay, this is Gail Thomas. Hey. Hi, how are you? Well, I'm well. I, real quick, I just got on. So is this recorded? Yes, it will be uploaded to YouTube. Perfect. You look so yes. pretty. Thank you so much. Yay. I'm so glad you were able to jump on, even for a yes. little bit. Yes. <laughs> That's right. All right. I look forward to seeing it. Okay. Thank All you. Right. Uh-huh. Bye. Bye. Yes. YouTube, everybody, if you're interested in catching up on the look, please go ahead and check it out on YouTube. So happy you were all able to join. Thanks again. If no one has any questions, then we will conclude our masterclass for today. Thank you so much. You this is all. amazing. Oh, you're welcome. Is this Chantel? Chantel. Yes, Rainbow. Hi, I'm so glad. Yes, I see. <laughs> I'm so glad you were able to join and I hope you were able to learn something today. Yes, I did. I did. <laughs> awesome. Well, if you do your makeup and you recreate this look, be sure to tag us. We'd love to see. You're welcome, Vanessa. Great, great. That'll be awesome. Thank you so awesome. much again. You're welcome, Chantel. Okay. Bye-bye, okay. right, everybody. Bye-bye. Great weekend.